In this video we'll talk about US regulations on cryptocurrencies and the latest update introduced by FinCEN in 2021 in the space of anti-money laundering. So let's get right into today's video. Hi and welcome to FinCrime Agent. This is my YouTube channel where I'm talking about financial crime prevention and anti-money laundering related topics. Today I will cover cryptocurrencies in light of the changes that have been introduced in 2021 by FinCEN, specifically with the anti-money laundering requirements connected to virtual asset service providers and unhosted wallets. We will look into the general requirements of virtual asset service providers and we will go into the details of the changes that are now introduced. As always, I have prepared some slides to discuss more this topic, so let's bring up the slides and talk about cryptocurrencies. First of all, let's start to understand why cryptocurrency virtual asset service providers must comply with anti-money laundering regulations. I've got on the slide in here an extract from the FinCEN guidance and if you want to read the full guidance, a link is available in the description of my video. In the extract we can read that the Financial Crime Enforcement Network is issuing this interpretative guidance to remind persons subject to the Bank Secrecy Act how fins and regulations relating to money services businesses apply to certain business model involving money transmission denominated in a value that substitutes for currency, specifically convertible virtual currencies. With this extract from the FinCEN guidance, we can see how FinCEN is correlating a virtual asset service provider with an MSB, which is a money service business. So in the same way that the regulations for anti-money laundering are applicable to an MSB, the same regulations are now used also for virtual asset service providers. And this is why a hosted wallet or a company that is uh, transferring cryptocurrencies, especially registered in the United States, would need to comply with anti-money laundering regulations. So let's go a bit more into the details of the anti-money laundering requirements for virtual asset service providers and see which are the areas that they actually need to comply with. The first one would be to have a risk assessment in place in order to identify the exposure to money laundering that an organization could have in line with their product, services and footprint. The second point would be to have a anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing program in place. And in the next slide now I'm going to show you which are the areas that needs to be compliant and need to follow some regulations in line with the FinCEN requirements. So there are different areas that a virtual asset service provider would need to comply as part of their anti-money laundering program. The first one would be to have policies and procedures in place. Those needs to be reviewed on a regular basis and they need to be in line with the risks driven within the risk assessment of the organization. It will be essential to have a money laundering reporting officer figure within the organization. This is the actual person that is taking responsibility for the compliance of the anti-money laundering programs. Virtual asset service providers would also need to have a KYC CDD review of their customers and we will see more details on the KYC CDD requirements later on when we will talk about the changes that are now introduced by FinCEN. There will be the requirement to have a transaction monitoring in place, so a solution that is allowing them to monitor the activities completed by their customers to prevent money laundering. They would need to have staff training in place and an independent audit as well to make sure that all the systems and control that they are using are actually operating effectively. If we look at the virtual asset service provider sanctions requirement as they are in line with a money service business, we can see that freezing and blocking of transactions is applicable to them as well, which includes blocking transactions if they have a sanctions exposure at the level of countries, individuals or corporate that they are dealing with. So at this point, I think it's going to be useful to differentiate between a hosted versus 
unhosted wallet and let's look at the definition that is provided by FinCEN. Again, this is another extract coming from the FinCEN guidance uh, um, issued in 2019 and it said that wallets are interfaces for storing and transferring CVCs. There are different wallet types that vary according to the technology that is employed, where and how the value is stored and who control access to the value. Current example of different types of CVC wallets that vary by technology employed are mobile wallets, software wallets and hardware wallets. Wallets may store value locally or store a private key that will control access to value stored on an external server. Wallets may also use multiple private keys stored in multiple locations. In this last part that I'm going to read is in fact specifying the definition of hosted and unhosted. Wallets where user funds are controlled by third parties are called hosted wallets, whereas wallets where users control the funds are called unhosted wallets. In the next slide you can see which are some examples of hosted and unhosted wallets. The list is not obviously a comprehensive list, it's just an example bringing here some of the most famous names in the two categories. So people can familiarize with the two categories. I'm not, again, associated with any of these organizations in uh, any way. So I can now focus more on the US regulations on cryptocurrency for what is concerning the FinCEN requirement that was presented in 2020 and is now currently in place as of 2021. The document that this information is extracted from is the FinCEN uh, document, which is again referenced in the description of this video. The extracts from FinCEN where I want to bring your attention is this part which is specified that first this proposed rule would require banks and MSBs to file a report with FinCEN containing certain information related to a customer's convertible virtual currency or legal tender digital assets transaction and counterparties and to verify the identity of their customer if a counterparty to the transaction is using an unhosted or otherwise covered wallet and the transaction is greater than ten thousand dollars or the transaction is one of multiple cvc transactions involving such counterparty wallets and the customer flowing through the banks or MSB within the 24 hours period that aggregated to value in or value out of greater than $10,000. Second, this proposed rule would require banks and MSBs to keep record of a customer CVCs or LTDA transaction and counterparty, including verifying the identity of the customer if a counterparty is using an unhosted or otherwise covered wallet and the transaction is greater than $3,000. Okay, I understand there is quite a bit to digest in this extract, but this is actually the key part of the changes. So to simplify a bit what we have just talked about, I have prepared in the next slide some more information that will help you to understand what is all about. So we look from the perspective of a virtual asset service provider. Remember that those are put on the same plate as a money service business. So we have a cryptocurrency transaction taking place. The first question is to understand if it's actually coming from an unhosted wallet. If that is not the case, the virtual asset service provider still need to understand if the bus sending the transaction is located in a jurisdiction that is sanctions exposed by the United States. If that is the case, then the transaction should still be blocked and a notification would need to be provided to the Office of Foreign Asset Control. If that is not the case, then no reporting would be required to FinCEN and the regulation has not changed. Let's go back and see if the transaction is actually coming from an unhosted wallet. So the first point to check is if the customer transaction value in the last 
24 hours is aggregated to more than $10,000. If that is not the case, the second check, as we've seen before in the FinCEN requirement, is to see the value of the actual transaction. Is this above $3,000? If it's not greater than $3,000, again, not change and no reporting is required to FinCEN. But if it is greater than $3,000, then a KYC is required to be completed on the customer and record of information must be retained, which includes also the name and residential address of all parties involved. Let's go back one step and see if the actual aggregated amount in the last 24 hours is greater than $10,000, we can see that a virtual asset service provider must file a CTR, which is a currency transaction report to FinCEN with full details of the transaction and the parties involved. Again, as I mentioned before, I want to highlight again that this diagram is designed based on my understanding of the MSB FinCEN requirement and Please do not rely upon it without seeking any professional advice. And that's all that I wanted to go over today regarding US regulations on cryptocurrency. I hope with this video I made some more clarity regarding the changes introduced by FinCEN in 2021 regarding money service business and more specifically cryptocurrency interaction with hosted and unhosted wallets. If you have enjoyed my video, remember to share with your contacts and if you haven't done that remember to subscribe to my channel and press the bell so you can get notified once new videos are going live also remember to check the description of this video where you will find links and references for the guidance and regulations that i've mentioned in my video in the description of the video you will also find the patreon.com page where with a small contribution you can become part of my Patreon community and receive some unique material that is created for my patrons. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed. Until next time, see you soon.